deep beneath the Indian Ocean, a silent, high-stakes game is being played. It's a game of shadows and secrets, where some of the world's most advanced submarines hunt and are hunted in a constant struggle for dominance. These are the Guardians of the Deep, India's submarine fleet, on a hidden mission to protect a nation's massive maritime frontier. Today, we're looking at India's Arahant and Calvary-class submarines and the deadly cat-and-mouse game they play to secure a nation's interests in an increasingly crowded underwater battle space. To understand India's submarine fleet, you have to understand its battleground, the Indian Ocean. This isn't just water, it's the world's commercial superhighway. For India, with a coastline over 7,500 kilometers long, this ocean is both a lifeline and a vulnerability. The problem for New Delhi has been the expanding naval presence of its strategic rivals. China, in its push for global influence, has established a network of ports and naval ties in the region, often called the String of Pearls. This is seen in India as a direct challenge, raising fears of encirclement, while the growing China-Pakistan naval axis creates a two-front threat. To counter this pressure, India has invested in the ultimate tool of naval stealth, a formidable submarine fleet. The core of India's underwater force is its fleet of diesel-electric attack submarines, or SSKs. The most modern are the Calvary class, based on the French Scorpane design, but built in India. With the final submarine, INS Vagshia, commissioned on January 15, 2025, the first batch of six is now complete. These predators are incredibly stealthy and armed with a potent mix of torpedoes and anti-ship missiles. Backing them up are the veterans, the Sindhugosh class submarines. These Russian origin Kilo class boats have been the backbone of the submarine arm for decades and many are undergoing life extension upgrades. The fleet is rounded out by four aging German designed Shishimar class vessels. But this conventional fleet has a huge handicap. None of its current submarines have Air Independent Propulsion, or AIP. This technology allows a non-nuclear sub to stay submerged for weeks instead of days, making it much harder to detect. It's a critical gap the nation is racing to fill. Nuclear-powered submarines are the ultimate guarantee of national security, their endurance limited only by supplies for the crew. India operates two types for two vital missions. First are the nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, or SSBNs. These mobile, undetectable launch platforms are the most survivable part of a nation's nuclear triad. Their mission is to stay hidden and ready, guaranteeing a second strike capability that fits India's no-first-use nuclear policy. The heart of this capability is the homegrown Arihant class. INS Arihant is operational, joined by the more advanced INS Arigat, commissioned on August 29, 2024. The next boat, INS Aridaman, is a larger vessel that began final trials in late 2025. The second type is the nuclear-powered attack submarine, or SSN, apex predators designed to hunt enemy submarines and warships. Right now, India has a major capability gap here. To bridge this, India has historically leased a cooler-class submarines from Russia. A third lease was signed in 2019, but delivery has reportedly been pushed back to 2028. A fleet of clandestine warriors needs a clandestine lair. For India's nuclear submarines, that fortress is INS Varsha. Located near Rambili on India's eastern coast, it is one of the nation's most classified defense projects. Expected to be fully operational around 2026, INS Varsha is a massive underground facility with fortified tunnels carved into the coastline, designed to protect India's most valuable strategic assets from satellite surveillance and even a potential nuclear strike. Its location provides quick covert access to the Bay of Bengal and the wider Indo-Pacific, ensuring the survival of India's sea-based deterrent.
In the silent dark depths, naval warfare is a lethal game of hide and seek, where stealth is the primary weapon. Kilo class submarines play a game of acoustic hide and seek, using quiet motors to lie in wait and monitor choke points, like the Malacca Strait. The newer Calvary class subs use their advanced sensors for more offensive missions, like shadowing adversary warships. The arrival of nuclear powered submarines changes the game completely. An Arihant class SSBN on patrol will slip out of INS Varsha and disappear for months, a ghost promising overwhelming retaliation. Future SSNs will be the Hunters, using their speed and endurance to track enemy nuclear submarines, becoming a constant, menacing presence. India knows its fleet has limitations and is driving an ambitious modernization under its Atmanirbhar Bharat, or self-reliant India policy. The most critical program is Project 75I, which aims to build six next-generation conventional submarines equipped with game-changing AIP technology, in partnership with Germany's Tyson Krupp Marine Systems. The first boat is expected in the early 2030s. To fill the SSN gap, the government has also greenlit a project to build six indigenous nuclear-powered attack submarines. The first of these powerful hunter killers is hoped to be ready by the mid-2030s, which would finally give India the power projection it seeks. Building three different classes of advanced submarines at once shows how serious India is about its strategic ambitions. But the challenges of delays and costs are huge. Do you think India can meet these ambitious timelines and become a dominant underwater power? Let us know in the comments, and for more deep dives into military tech, be sure to subscribe. From aging Kilo-class workhorses to the homegrown, nuclear-tipped Arihant, India's submarine fleet is a force in transition, caught between an aging reality and future ambition. The mission of these guardians of the deep is more critical than ever, as the Indian Ocean becomes a global stage for competition. The silent warriors of the Indian Navy are the unseen shield and hidden sword of a rising power. Their deadly game of cat and mouse in the deep will shape not just India's maritime security, but its place as a formidable power in the Indo-Pacific.